Hi, this is your host Sapna Bhartia and welcome to another episode of Mainframe Matters. And today we have with us Rune Christensen, lead software developer at Bank Data. Rune, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you. It's great to be here. We are going to talk about, you know, how Bank Data leverages open mainframe projects, uh, their COBOL programming course and Zoe. But before we talk about that, I would love to know a bit about Bank Data itself. So, so talk about yourself, please. So Bank Data is a software developing company that is owned by a number of banks and we provide uh, back-end services and front-end services for the these banks. Uh, we talk about uh, mainframe sometimes folks look at you know it's technology that has been around but the fact is that it plays a very critical role in modern uh, economy so can you talk about just clear some doubts people have about mainframe that how mainframe is powering modern economy? Um, the mainframe is definitely powering powering modern economy. Uh, at the moment, by far, most of our software runs on mainframe. Um, with the with CICS and transaction based transaction based uh, services, both REST and SOAP services. Yeah. Excellent. And as you said that, you know, you work with a lot of banks. So can you also uh, talk a bit about, you know, what kind of, you know, solutions you offer to, you know, the whole ecosystem there? We offer their, the entire toolcase for these banks, um, including uh, mobile applications for, uh, for you and I. We, we, we support that and develop that. We uh, develop the um, applications that the bank employees use from, on a day-to-day -day basis. So everything from account transfers to uh, stock, uh, buying and selling of stocks and uh, so on. So as you help these banks uh, with these services, talk a bit about how are you leveraging uh, uh, mainframe or COBOL and other you know, such technologies? Mainly we use COBOL for the backend services that are our front end calls. So if you're doing a money transfer between two accounts, well, that's that includes a call to a backend service, and that backend service is in COBOL, uh, running on a Kix. COBOL has been around for a very long time, but there is a fresh breed of developers who are more like interested or inclined to work a lot of modern languages. So, so can you also talk about you know what have you seen in the space, and how do you kind of tell folks because you do need uh, you know your team who are well versed in these technologies. So, what kind of challenges and problems you see in the space? One of the greatest challenges we see in uh, in using COBOL is actually uh, hiring new developers and getting them to use it. Um, the The interfaces for programming has hasn't evolved as fast for COBOL as it has for, for example, Java. So for a long time, we've been relying on a uh, a um, IDE that is in ISPF uh, on the mainframe instead of, for example, Visual Studio Code. And uh, so that, that is one of the big challenges. Another challenge is that uh, a lot of students haven't heard about mainframe and haven't heard about, uh, actually haven't heard about transaction processing uh, when they're getting their education there. They have a lot of uh, great theoretical knowledge, but the practical knowledge with transaction-based processing and um, how you have to manage that is something we really need. As you talk about some of these challenges, can you talk about uh, what kind of efforts are going on there? Their project like Open Mainframe Project, they have you know the COBOL programming courses there. So talk about the efforts that you see are going on there to help this new breed of students so that uh, these industries continue to get the resources, the skill set that they need. Yes, we are using uh, the Open Mainframe project, uh, the COBOL course. Um, we are, to, for all our new employees, uh, developers, we are recommending the COBOL course on or the Open Mainframe project. Um, because, well, there are a number of other projects out there, but the Open Mainframe project COBOL course ties well into uh, Visual Studio Code which we are trying to move our software, our COBOL developers towards. Uh, so, so those two things fit very well together. Um, we're also heavily uh, invested in the COBOL check um, 
application that is being developed on the Open Mainframe project, which is a unit testing for COBOL. And um, I believe we're at on version 2.1, 0.2.1 right now. And at some point we should uh, be able to integrate the unit testing into the, the COBOL course. Um, so us using Visual Studio Code together with the, the COBOL course and the move we are doing right now of, of trying to get our developers into using Visual Studio Code for, with COBOL um, is part of our, our movement, our journey towards enabling uh, our developers um, <laughs> towards enabling uh, new developers, new employees to learn COBOL faster and be able to produce code faster than before because they are, we are avoiding the steep learning curve of the mainframe. Here is Visual Studio Code. You're using Git as you're, you, you know from everywhere else. So yeah, get on cracking, get on coding. So. I also want to know a bit more about uh, that how you, your team interact with the open mainframe project or also uh, in what cap capacity are you involved with the project? We are involved in, in the project called Cobol Check. And we're a part, we've been contributing a lot the last year to that project and has been the main drive for moving the project from a non-release version to the release that we have now, um, which actually is a fully functional unit testing tool. It doesn't have all the, the polish that other tools have yet, but you can definitely use it to test your COBOL and, and use it to verify that your code works. Um, one of uh, the interests, uh, one of the contacts we've been getting from for this uh, tool is a website called Exorcism. Um, and they are providing exercises in different uh, languages. And one of those, they just added COBOL because we've created the COBOL check framework. So you can actually go to Exorcism, I believe, org, and um, try out COBOL and run your unit tests using COBOL check from the Open Mainframe project. At Paint Data, we've integrated COBOL check in our Visual Studio Code installation. Actually, COBOL check comes with its own, its own extension for Visual Studio Code with uh, highlighting for the syntax in COBOL check and um, displaying a nice displaying of the results from a, from a unit tests. Um, so we're heavily pushing unit tests to our COBOL developers to enable them to shift left and test earlier and more often. Um, this ties into the pipeline we've made from our Git repositories. So when a, a developer has pushed COBOL source to a Git repository, they also push the unit test to that repository. And when that source is pushed to the mainframe, the part of the pipeline runs those unit tests and makes sure that they all pass. Another thing, this pipeline is primarily built on top of SOE. So moving source code to the mainframe, running the compile on the mainframe, making sure load modules are in the right place, that's all done through SOE. When the pipeline runs on our mainframe, um, no, when, when the pipeline has deployed to our staging development on the mainframe, um, we're not done yet because to push to production, we of course have another pipeline. And in that pipeline, we're actually able to use IBM's debugger to calculate code coverage from the, the unit tests. Um, we're delivering those data back to the developers and back to our um, leaders uh, and, and directors in Grafana dashboards. 
so they can follow the progress of their unit tests. Since you are involved with uh, some of these projects, I also want to know uh, if you have any either feedback for the community, for the ecosystem, for the, I mean, you folks yourself are involved. Uh, where do you want to see COBOL check for the new, uh, Evolve or, you know, Zoe or the mainframe project? Yes, so, so I would like to see the old mainframe project move towards more, not towards less dependence on IBM products. Um, there is a project, I believe it's Polycephaly, uh, that is creating a pipeline for deploying, uh, compiling and deploying COBOL code to the mainframe. Where I think it's a great idea, but they're basing themselves on the dependency-based build engine from from main uh, the, 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 from IBM, and uh, it would be great if they were able to build their own dependency-based uh, builder, um, because we want. That's one of the things that. That's one of the reasons we are in bank data moving towards VS Code and, and Git. It's because we are able to say to the developers, well, we have this tool that you can use, but if you prefer IntelliJ or some other editor, you can just go ahead and use that. We don't care because the interface is Git. And we also don't really care if we are in Bitbucket or we are in GitHub because we can move because we have we have moved away from the dependence on IBM to manage the source code. We just want to move, use the mainframe as the tool for running our software, not for not for developing it. I also want to hear your insights and thoughts on Kubol Check as well, uh, in terms of any feedback you have for the project or how do you want to see this project to further evolve uh, or what kind of evolution you're seeing there? I think Kubol Check is in a a very good position as it is right now. Um, what we're missing is polish. Um, we're missing uh, help getting to a level where we can uh, say that we can release this in a version 0. Point, by 1.0 uh, instead of uh, having a version that is actually still in beta. Um, we, uh, we would very much like to be able to run tests on a mainframe before uh, accepting pull requests, but uh, we haven't been able to do that at the moment. Um, we would like uh, improved integration with, with Visual Studio Code and also with other tools, uh, if possible. There's no reason that we should limit ourselves to, to that IDE. Um, so there, there is still a lot to be done and a lot of improvements that can be done. Who else can, or you know, there may be a lot of folks who have not fully understood the potential of COBOL check. So if you can also talk about where, how it can help more folks, just so that they will know, hey, you know, we are also in the radar of this project, or this should, project should be uh, uh, in our radar. I believe COBOL check can help anybody doing uh, COBOL source uh, COBOL code, not necessarily for the mainframe, but for, for any COBOL application, uh, because there is no other unit testing tool out there that enables you to, to do the shift left that we are experiencing a lot of industries moving towards. We want to test often, we want to test early, and we want it to be cheap and fast. Um, there are a lot of other testing tools for COBOL, we, and they're great, there are no, no questions about it, but they're testing the entire program. What we're testing in COBOL check is the paragraph or the section. We're testing two lines of code or even one line of code at, at one time. So if you have a complex evaluate structure, you don't have to run your entire program. You can actually just build a test and just test that section for that evaluate structure. I, I just want to say that if you want to see COBOL check demoed, uh, we're, I am uh, presenting COBOL check at the IBM Open Set Day in September. 
Rune, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about, you know, bank data, how you are helping the ecosystem and how you're leveraging these open source technologies like Cobalt Check, Zoe, Open Mainframe. Uh, thanks for sharing all those insights and also thanks for share, sharing those feedback that you have for the, for the community and the project. And as usual, I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for letting me, me come with all these suggestions and promoting Cobalt Check. <laughs>